Hello, my name is Austin Habich, the founder of Think Catholic, and you're listening to the Summa Near Podcast, where we study St. Thomas Aquinas' Summa Theologiae in a way simple and insightful for anyone to understand. The Summa Near Podcast is brought to you by Think Catholic. Taking two questions of the Summa a day, we'll seek to summarize St. Thomas's responses, discovering the brilliance of Aquinas and his Catholic faith this day 50. So let's get started. We're covering today questions 97 and 98 of the Prima Pars, that is, of the preservation of the individual in the primitive state and of the preservation of the species. The translation that I always use in these podcasts is the one generously provided to me by Ave Maria Press, the five-volume set translated by the Fathers of the English Dominican Province, which you can now get at a discounted price from Ave Maria Press's site by typing in the code SUMA10. And so here we go. Article 1. Whether in the state of innocence man would have been immortal... Responding from Scripture, Aquinas writes, It is written, Romans chapter 5, verse 12, By sin death came into the world. Therefore man was immortal before sin. But how, St. Thomas continues, God made man immortal as long as he did not sin, so that he might achieve for himself life or death. For man's body was indissolvable, not by reason of any intrinsic vigor of immortality, but by reason of a supernatural force given by God to the soul, whereby it was enabled to preserve the body from all corruption so long as it remained itself subject to God. This entirely agrees with reason, for since the rational soul surpasses the capacity of corporeal matter, as we've explained, it was most properly endowed at the beginning with the power of preserving the body in a manner surpassing the capacity of corporeal matter, which is pretty straightforward, and so we will simply continue. Article 2, whether in the state of innocence man would have been passable. St. Thomas distinguishes two kinds of passability or capability to be affected upon. The first is to be affected in a way contrary to one's natural disposition, for example, being physically wounded. The second kind of passability, using the term in a more general way, would include changes also for the better, like learning more or seeing a beautiful landscape. Regarding the first, more specific kind of passability, the kind against one's nature man would not have been. That kind of passable in the state of innocence, as Aquinas says, man was impassable both in soul and body as he was likewise immortal, for he could curb his passion as he could avoid death so long as he refrained from sin. But in regard to the second way of considering passability, one in accord with one's nature, man would have been passable, for example, in regard to understanding and sensations, Aquinas says. Article 3, whether in the state of innocence man had need of food. As a rational animal, man would have had a natural need to take in food like other animals. It's just part of our nature as animal. And God did not create such a nature to act unnaturally even in the primitive state. We can also see, according to Revelation and Genesis, God saying, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, except for the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which would be strange to say if man had no need for food. But when it comes to the resurrection of the body on the last day, Aquinas says, at that point, man will not need food. Because in seeing God as he is, man will be properly divinized and live in a way more spiritual or more akin to the spiritual side of his nature, more likened to the angels than the animals. Although, of course, we would remain a body-soul composite since that is the essential definition of human. And I would add, this opinion from Aquinas seems to be in line with our Lord's words in his discussion on marriage, which seems to be applicable here as well. So Jesus said, The sons of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are counted worthy to attain to that age and to the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage, because they are equal to angels and are sons of God being sons of the resurrection. Article 4, whether in the state of innocence man would have acquired immortality by the tree of life. Augustine says, man had food to appease his hunger, drink to slake his thirst, and the tree of life to banish the breaking up of old age. And scripture says, then the Lord God said, behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Then Aquinas explains that the tree would have preserved man's life, 
which is what we mean by immortality, but it would have been a limited immortality because no created thing has an infinite power, so neither would the tree have had the power to bestow an infinite duration of life. Therefore, man would have either to have eaten again at some time, or man would have had to be raised by God to a new spiritualized kind of state. I would also like to mention here that just as we have said before that the woman being formed from the side of man was a fitting prefigurement of the church coming forth from the sleeping side of Christ, so too here, it looks like to me we have in the tree of life a fitting analogy to the sacrament of the Eucharist. For the tree of life from which man would be banished from the garden would then be guarded by an angel and a flaming sword. And of that tree, again, God says, if man puts forth his hand and eat from it, he shall live forever. And since Christ says all of scripture bears witness to him, that's John chapter 5 verse 39, then what could all these things be symbols of? Well, by word and sacrament, the word of God called a sword in scripture and sacrament, the Holy Spirit taking later the form of fire, and then through the hands of some messenger, which is what the word angel means, we enter via baptism into the new Eden. That's the mystical body of Christ, which is the church, where we can eat from the tree of life, Christ crucified, the fruit of which is the Eucharist, which is why Jesus says in his treatment on the Eucharist, John 6, he who eats my flesh has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. But enough for personal fringe theories. Getting back to Aquinas, we move on to question 98, which has only two articles. Article 1, whether in the state of innocence generation existed. Generation here meaning reproduction. In the state of innocence, would man and woman have brought forth children? St. Thomas answers from Scripture, writing, It is written in Genesis, Increase and multiply and fill the earth. But this increase could not have come about save by generation, since the original number of mankind was two only. Therefore, there would have been generation in the state of innocence. And that's really all there is about that article. And now on to Article 2, which is our last article of this question, whether in the state of innocence there would have been generation by coition. Coition is a word we derive from the Latin roots, meaning to come together. So the question is whether reproduction would have occurred via sexual intercourse in the state of innocence. Aquinas says yes, and in his words, God made man and woman before sin, but nothing is void in God's works. Therefore, even if man had not sinned, there would have been such intercourse to which the distinction of sex is ordained. The argument here is that since the sexual difference is what distinguishes male from female, there would be no purpose to have made male and female if not that in coming together they might bring forth another of their kind, reproduction via sexual intercourse. And that's a wrap for questions 97 and 98 of the Prima Pars, that is, of the preservation of the individual in the primitive state and of the preservation of the species. My name is Austin Habish with Think Catholic. And I cannot wait to see you tomorrow.